Good morning everyone. Welcome to my astronomy studio. I am uh, Satya Kumar. Today, um, it's the first episode and I'm doing it in a single shot. So, excuse me for all the bloopers. Today I shall uh, be explaining a little bit about my setup. Um, also about uh, my latest astronomy adventure, if you can call it that. Um, what I've done is I've been uh, able to uh, successfully control my um, equatorial mount through EQMOD project, uh, the free to download uh, go to control uh, software. That's uh, far, far better than uh, uh, the standard uh, go to controller that's available with the uh, telescope mount itself. So, let's begin. What I have uh, here uh, in the field of view is uh, the Orion 80ED refract telescope. It's a nice little instrument, portable uh, and uh, very good optics. I use that mainly um, during my test sessions, but uh, I think uh, I'm pretty much sure that uh, I'll be using it also for my upcoming imaging sessions uh, because it's uh, I admit a little bit less of a hassle uh, to assemble when compared to my 8 inch uh, reflector telescope um, I used to use this uh, uh, refractor uh, as a guide scope but I guess I'll have to think again What you now see is the Skywatcher HEQ5 uh, Pro Go to Equatorial Mount, um, fully computerized. It has uh, motors in it, and uh, it'll go to any one of the few thousand uh, objects in its uh, database. That uh, is the hand controller. Let me just uh, zoom in. Yeah, that's the hand controller uh, for the HEQ5 Pro Mount. It's the same uh, practically for the any one of these uh, Skywatcher EQ uh, mounts that has go to control from uh, the EQ3 Pro uh, to the NEQ6 um, it, it may also be the same for the EQ8 I'm not really very sure about that um, but uh, that's the go to controller what I want you all to see notice is the little grey wire that's uh, coming uh, from the go to controller it goes all the way there squiggly little thing and go to my laptop you see through the USB cable it's connected to my laptop that's the beginning of the EQMOD connection for my mount I have now the connected uh, my mount to the mains power supply to the that's uh, visible in the wall socket over there and that runs all the way to the mount but what I've also shown is uh, my 18H uh, Amaron uh, battery on a full charge it uh, lasts me about uh, 7 to 8 hours on the current load I haven't tested it with my 8 inch uh, telescope and uh, the Orion uh, guide scope mounted one on top of the other um, but uh, yeah that's the battery and uh, as usual I have all the mess uh, lying around um, alright now I can uh, begin uh, setting up uh, the uh, PC direct connection uh, with the mount itself and uh, then uh, further on uh, I shall uh, show you how to operate it uh, through the laptop and the joystick I've now switched on the mount itself and then after it initializes now this is the SynScan handset so I won't be going through each and every step because we have all been through that practically every single night we get to observe so press enter several times until you get to the date so today is the 28th of November 2013 press enter the time is uh, 12.23, so a very good afternoon, um, lunch time is in 
maybe another hour. Um, so press enter several times, including skipping the uh, alignment because you're not going to use the handset uh, for the star alignment uh, from now on. You'll be using the laptop itself and uh, using uh, a planetarium software. But I'll get to that later on. Um, so press no for the big uh, for the time being and it will show you setup but now use the scroll buttons and go to the utility function press enter and then scroll again until you get to uh, PC direct mode now press enter and voila your uh, mount is now speaking to the laptop directly so what do we do next I can pull that table a little bit um, so I hope you all can uh, see my laptop um, let's minimize uh, that website for the EQMod project and uh, I shall launch CL. I don't know how to pronounce uh, it in French so my French is as good as your Hindi so just leave it at that um, okay this is a planetarium software um, with not much uh, fancy graphics around like Stellarium but um, quite user friendly. I was uh, quite wary of this uh, software uh, initially but uh, I've seen some of my friends use it successfully and uh, that's what I shall do. Um, in, the con in the toolbar, if you can call it that, um, upper row, you'll see a little icon for a telescope that says control panel. So click on the control panel and uh, it will pop up the ASCOM telescope uh, interface. So in the first uh, button that says select, you select what mount you have. You have, I have an IQ mod ASCOM EQ5 EQ6 system. So select that and press enter, okay, sorry. And then press connect. And it does connect. It says the mount is parked, blah, blah, blah. So there's a button that says unpark. So that's the next best step. Let's unpark the mount. You can minimize this because uh, you won't be using it uh, anymore. And other than for the establishment of the connection itself with the mount, <coughs> with the Cartier UCL software and the mount. Now, what I shall do is I shall just select some random star in the sky to show you how it all uh, goes together. Oh, that's the sun by the way if you can see it um, let's say there's a, a beta libra okay that's a nice blue star so I'm fancying beta libra right now so let me slew to beta libra and there's a button called uh, slew right next to the control uh, panel button so just press uh, slew Aha, so the mount automatically slows uh, to Beta Libra or close to where it's supposed to be provided that you have actually polar aligned uh, the equatorial mount well or reasonably well. Um, you can do the polar alignment later but I'll leave that to a uh, video later on because that's, that's a separate topic all by itself. Um, so we have got this pointing at uh, Beta Libra. What you should do is you can now use the North, South, East, West buttons as well as the rate changing button to you know move uh, the telescope uh, itself to the actual Beta Libra because you can you have to see it uh, through the eyepiece. Um, use a crosshair reticle eyepiece and. Uh, Centering it in the crosshair reticle eyepiece will go a long way in the pointing uh, ability of your mount. Uh, that's what I realized. You can also use the gamepad. I use a PC compatible uh, gamepad. This is a, just some cheap standard Chinese uh, gamepad. I borrowed from my cousin. My new one is on the way today via Korea. So I connect it to the USB on my laptop and I'll just expand this thing and see that everything else is uh, set up. Um, I, 
I can change uh, the settings of the gamepad. Uh, I think I'll have to do it every time by the looks of it. Um, just clear all. Uh, low defaults, sorry. And whatever you want to clear, um, just right click on that. And press the button that you want um, to assign on the joystick. So I just press some button that says select for the emergency stop. Okay. And back to home, I'll press what do I press? Yeah, I'll press this button 10. And unpack also, I'll press the same button because it kind of makes sense because I can park and unpack using the same button and try to remember which button I've assigned for parking and which for unparking. Side aerial rate, I'll not assign anything for the rates themselves. And um, spiral search also I shall not assign any rates. What I shall do is for the increase array rate and the increase deck rate, I shall assign the same button. So both rates will increase at the same time. Um, otherwise, it's kind of fiddly that you know you have to press two different buttons for uh, two different rates. You don't want to increase array rate and deck rate separately. Doesn't make sense. At least it doesn't make sense to me. Decrease array rate and decrease uh, deck rate. Also would be the same thing, but that will be button 7. So it shows up a warning in yellow that two buttons, uh, two, control two controls have been assigned to the same button, which is absolutely alright. There is a thing called uh, increment preset and decrement rate preset. So I will assign one button for that and another for that. So that uh, helps. Alignment accept. Button 1, alignment cancel, button 3, and sync, button 2, apply changes, and it's done. So what I shall do, I shall move the mount using my joystick. See, I can sync using button 2, kind of sync, yes, yes. let me check. Let me change the rate, yep, it's uh, changing the rate, so you will see the mount move, see that, see that, I use the joystick, and it actually moves, I can move in any direction I want to, north, south, east, west, north, west, north, east, using the joystick, so, um, it kind of helps, and it's quite quick, the response. So this is uh, what EQMod is all about. Um, yeah, I'm supposed to have it on uh, Beta Libra. So what I should do is I can again uh, press slow. So I wanted to change it on the gamepad controller itself. Oh, oh kind of electric shock. Um, well, there's no slew button uh, assignment. That's really surprising. They should probably put a slew button assignment. But uh, maybe they have thought about it. Um, no comments. Um, so now that it's slewed, I'm supposed to press sync. I hope that works. Um, yeah. So, sync. It's synced with Beta Libra, apparently. And if it does, then it should say point count one, which it did. So it has synced with Beta Libra. Similarly, I can probably go to some other random star. Um, the reason, uh, well, you see, your handset has got three point alignment, right? So, if you need a good pointing accuracy, even with EQ mod, you need three points plus preferably more number of points. Um, you see, this kind of a setup is uh, available with the Celestron uh, Nexstar mounts, but not with the Skywatcher mounts. Skywatcher maximum is three points, because you can't add any other alignment point to it uh, to increase the accuracy. Uh, but with EQ mod, you can. And um, two nights ago, when I was uh, testing out uh, the um, mount with EQ mod, it, it actually helped. Even in uh, the DSLR, um, which is currently recording the video, 
objects were centered in the frame, like really dead centered, and that I was extremely impressed by the pointing accuracy in that way. Um, so framing of uh, deep sky objects did not take uh, much time, um, which is really good. Um, so where are we right now? Um, yeah, so you add alignment point. There is a system uh, that talks about the three point uh, plus nearest uh, point uh, similar to the Celestron uh, next style handsets. And uh, that's extremely accurate. Um, as I said, it did uh, center uh, um, the object's dead, I mean, well, extremely well centered in my DSLR. Uh, that's recording right now. So, what I have uh, learned is um, any object that you want to have a look at, pick three stars near that object and uh, if you sync them uh, to the system, then uh, the pointing is uh, really, really good. So, thank you very much uh, um, for uh, watching this episode, uh, um, as Astronomy Musings uh, with Satya. Um, Stay tuned, I shall uh, um, put up another video that's probably about polar alignment or uh, maybe even about uh, a general description of all the equipment uh, that I've got. Um, clear skies and uh, bye bye.